we always hear about a lot of the violence and the crazy shit that goes on in jail but what a lot of people don't know is it's some outstanding athletes that be in prison like next level athletes that you won't believe and i heard you was one of them gully was popping thanks thanks um state prison inmate you know number df 5973 i came through the, the system at um 18 like turning 19 um i just like to say prior to you know arriving in prison and shit i had already did you know juvenile corrections and it was basically the same story and shit um sports was a way that i was able to cut corners as far as entering social circles and shit like that like, I didn't really have to introduce myself to people that weren't approachable and shit. Like, people that didn't talk to people, guys that was dangerous or tough and shit like that. Um, I, I could make those guys smile and shit. You know what I'm saying? I could make those guys speak from just from, from sports. Um, every, every correctional, you know, setting that I ever was in, sports was like the top. It was the way that... We assembled ourselves and shit without seeing an actual physical fist fight. You could kind of determine, you know, a guy's heart and whether, you know, you know, whether he had any type of backbone if he participated in sports in prison because they was contact sports. And the, um, your opponents and the guys that you're playing with, they are killers and, you know, they are dangerous. They are aggressive and shit like that. So anybody who was participating you basically knew that he was a man like that's understood about sports and institutions everybody that's participating they a man bro they'll fight you and everything like it ain't no suckers on the field or on the basketball court <laughs> at all um um i i, I entered the, the system in 1997 state prison system um camp hill was the name of the the jail that we go to you know, it's, it's the clinical jail that you go to for all your testing, you know, tuberculosis. And, you know, they, they try to see where your educational level is where you get your custody level at. And um, I got there and getting there, it was kind of like it was it, it, I, I wasn't scared, so to speak, because t to get to um, Camp Hill, I had to go, go to a jail that was actually more notorious called The Wall, Western Penitentiary. I had to go through there first. So by the time I made it to Camp Hill, which is about three weeks later, all of the, you know, fear of like convicts and shit like that, it probably was gone. Um, when I got to Camp Hill, this is my introduction to the Philadelphia guys as adults. Now, this isn't foreign territory to me because I've been in the juvenile system with these guys, but now we're adults. When I got there, I seen a lot of guys that I knew from the juvenile system, you know, which of course, it made me, you know, um, I don't know, a little bit more comfortable with the with the situation. All of us were dressed in blues. We all we we all appeared to be, you know, our first time coming through the system. Some guys they had already came through, but um, yeah, it's the clinic and shit, and we in state boots and you know the skippies and shit. We not even in state boots, yet. we in the skippies. You know the white Gilligan joints that they give you and shit, mm -hmm. and. We always lock down because, like I said, we're in the clinic and shit. We come out, we get yard time, but we're not a part of this jail. We, we're not going to school and, you know, we don't have no, we're not, we not bidding yet. So anytime we go to the yard, basically everybody go out there. Um, from the time I got there, from the time I got to jail, I wanted to play ball. I was, when I got to Western, which is the jail prior to Camp Hill, um, we was locked down, you know, we was locked down. You in, you in the, 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 the medical situation, so you can't be around people. And I really wanted to, I was tired of being locked down. I wanted to get out myself. So when, when I finally started to play ball, it kind of like broke me out of my shell. Remember, take, take taking into consideration, I'm a kid, I'm 18, you know, about to be 19. I've never been in a state prison system. These are all men that I'm around. How, um, how much time, how much time you had to do? I was doing a three to nine. I had the exact same sentence as 50 Cent said he served. Three I, had, to nine. I had that same sentence too. I did 80 months on a three to nine. Um, a lot of it had to do with, you know, being young and reckless, but I'll get to that. 
Um, when I got to Camp Hill, I already had a reputation amongst my peers for sports and playing basketball and shit like that. Um, yeah, the people that, that came off the bus that I arrived on, we, we came from another jail together, so they had got a chance to see me play and shit like that. When, when I got to Camp Hill, this is um, basically the state jail where all of the cities meet. All of the cities in the whole state have to go here. So I'm in the yard with guys from Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Harrisburg, all of the cities in Pennsylvania. But it's probably 70% um, Philadelphia. I don't know if um, the populace in New York City, when y'all get to the prisons, because Brooklyn is such a big borough, does Brooklyn dominate um, population-wise certain jails? In Pennsylvania, all the jails, Philadelphia dominates all the jails, numbers-wise. Anyway, I have to make a name for myself basically all over. And somehow I end up getting picked to get on the court. It could have been by my size or something like that. But I get on the court and um, after like maybe like just three times down, I dunked in, in them skippies and shit. I dunked the ball. Everybody goes crazy. And um, the thing about dunking and What you mean? You dunked in a game or you just dunked like yeah, in yeah, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. We playing we five on five in the yard. They picked up and... Yeah, after like going up and down the court like three times, I dunked my first dunk. And the thing about dunking, um, like I said, I was 18. The thing about dunking is dunks don't start off as a, a dunk when you first start doing it. It'd be like you went up, you went to lay the ball up. Oh shit, I'm up here now. And you punch it. You start understanding that you're up there. You, you're getting up high enough to punch it. Punch it. So, um, this, I, I had dunked a couple times prior to going to, the, to prison. What but you mean in your life? You mean you had dunked yeah, a couple of times in your life or? Just a couple of times in my life, yeah, before I got there, yeah. My mom's six foot at the time, I believe. I'm like six foot at the time. I had dunked a couple of times prior. Just, it, it happens. Sometimes you would get one off, but when I got to jail, I'm eating every day, I'm resting, I guess my body's growing, so I'm, I'm dunking now, I'm dunking. And I'm like, oh shit, I see the effect that it had on people. And, you know, in public, like, I see the effect. And I wanted to do that shit again, like, I wanted to do it again, so, I, I can hoop too, I got a J and everything, but I got a newfound, you know, thing that I'm doing now, shit, I'm dunking now, shit, and, I wanted to dunk the ball whenever I got a chance to do it and shit. Um, I had to leave this jail, Camp Hill. I had to leave there after about five months and get shipped to my jail, which is called Retreat. Now, this is where my story and my legend begins. Shit. This is a, um, a grown man jail. It's a lot of older dudes there. It was a lot of older guys there. Um, older JBM guys, Junior Black Mafia, older mobsters. Um, guys from like the Nikki Scarfo organization from Philly and shit like that. A lot of older guys and shit. Um, I got there and I got there. The day that I got there, after, you know, checking my property in, I went to my block and he was like, yo, you can go to the yard. They just left and shit. So I, I'm like, where is it at? He point to it and I get to walking towards the yard. I've never been in the state prison yard. I got my browns on for the first day. And everybody know I just got there because I got these fucking skippies on and shit. Got these fucking skippies on and shit. So I'm walking up to the yard and I get up there and I see some dudes. You know, it was like eight or nine basketball courts at this jail and shit. I see some dudes just fucking around playing three on three. It was a full court game going. But I don't know these guys. They convicts. They grown men. They bigger than me. They much, much bigger than me. I ain't trying to get on the court with them. So I go to over to this little three-on-three -three game off, off to the side and shit. Start playing three-on-three -three with some guys. During the course of this three-on-three -three game, I dunk. Boom. When I dunk, everybody, ooh. Now the dudes that's playing full court on the big court, they looking. And, you know, a couple of them, couple of them gathered and was watching us playing three on three after their game, and they was like, "Shorty, all right." You know what I mean? They're like, "Young boy, all right." Like I said, I'm only 18. And um, one of them told me, "They like, yo, man, you should, you know, go to the activities department and you know meet Mr. Salerno and all of them. Like, they, you should play, you should play varsity." 
It's just, I don't know that they have a team. Nothing. Boom. I go back to my block. Like the next day, I get a, a, a pass. They send you passes to where you're going. Shit, oh, shit. When you wake up in the morning, you got a pass. You have to go up to the chaplain or you have to go up to the activity department. I got to go up to the activity department. I get up there. I get up there. Uh, the basketball coach is there and the activities guy, Mr. Salerno, that's his name. He was there and shit. And he was like, you know, talked about my age and where I was from. And he like, oh, you from Erie and shit. He said, y'all definitely produce athletes and shit. I'm familiar with where you're from. And, you know, again, I was young. He was like, you want to play, you know, varsity basketball and shit. I'm like, yeah, I play. He was like, well, you know, you're going to be playing against uh, the jails and this and this and that. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, that's cool. They was trying to de- determine whether I was afraid. Because like I said, last I was only 18. You see what I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm with it. That's what I, I- wanted to ask you. I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm, I wanted to ask you that, like, at 18 years old, um, did you have some type of head? Did you like? Was you thinking about? Did you have some type of hesitance in dunking on some of them adult ass big oh, convict? Nah, nah, nah. Because like I said, I just, I just told you like it don't start off as a dunk. Like you be just going to lay the ball up and you up there and then you just turn it over. Boom. That, that's <laughs> how it starts. Before you start maliciously dunking on niggas, <laughs> that's that's what I drew to be a malicious type dunker. But prior to that, it was just like, oh, it's the same way with the alley-oop. The first time I caught an alley-oop, I didn't know that I was going to get no oop. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I pointed, the nigga threw it, and I just went up there, and I just happened to get it and shit. I'm like, damn, I can catch these. And anybody that jumps off the two feet and catch alley-oops, they'll tell you. It's easy. It's easier to actually catch alley-oops than to dunk the ball off the dribble and shit. Because you get to gather yourself and really take off when mm. somebody else is throwing the ball. You feel me? When somebody else is throwing the ball up there, you get to gather yourself and really take off. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not malicious with it yet, and I don't understand the power of it yet. I got a newfound little power. Like I said, I'm 18. I'm about to turn, I turned 19 up there at this jail. Um, if my custody level was a level four because I had some violence as a juvenile. I was in jail for drugs and shit, but I had some violence prior and I got a level four. In order to travel, you have to be at least a level three, a custody level three. They dropped my custody level the next day um, after seeing me play ball and after me being co-signed by a couple of older basketball players in the jail. They like, yo, young boy is like that. I'm telling you. So, boom, they signed me up. Now, uh, here, now, now, this is when it's, I'm about to get the active fool and shit. Now, we got practice. That practice, is, and, you know, I'm getting the, I'm starting to play around these guys, and I'm starting to talk to these guys, and I'm starting to say, okay, he's not tough, or he's not a killer, or he's not dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Like, in conversation, you know, you break the ice and shit. As I'm doing time with these guys, and I'm starting to understand who... Hey, I'm a little bit rougher than this guy. And I'm a, although I'm 18, and he's 27, or he's 28, he's 30, I'm still wilder than him. He ain't... He's a grown man, but I'm wilder than him. I am. I'm wilder than him. I, I done been in these juvenile joints and shit like that. You dig what I'm saying? And... My body is starting to grow because I'm eating every day and I'm lifting weights and I'm banging into these niggas and shit. And I got older niggas in my head telling me, man, yo, you's a man child, man. You's a big, strong ass young nigga, man. You know how they talk to you? Like, one thing about uh, prison and shit, there's misconceptions that, like, everybody is predatory or trying to fuck you in the ass and shit like that. It's totally not like that. Um, I believe that reality is for people who draw that to themselves or some shit like that. But the older guys was really like into whoever was like when, when it was flag football games on, whoever was out there getting off like they was into that shit. Like they was amazed and like so they would tell me, yo, yo, young buck, you need to start squatting and shit. Like, everything you doing is, like, natural. Everything you doing is natural ability. Like, you're not even lifting weights yet. Like, they telling me what to do. But I ask, you know what I mean? Like, 
they, they basically build the monsters. Yeah, like that they was in that you know some of them OG dudes is real dudes, and they instill that self confidence in them young boys that somebody in the street should have been putting that self confidence in them, and they know that. So when you young and you 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 they see that potential in you, they are gonna keep it real with you and let you know. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, I got from being from being amongst these older educated veteran athletes, they would talk. They didn't talk about Michael Jordan. They talked about Doc. These niggas just have been in jail forever and shit. They like, man, you take off, you like Doc and shit. And they talking about David Thompson and shit like that. Like high flying niggas who from the seventies mm. because they didn't been in jail that long and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I, I'm, I'm I'm accepting the information from them. I'm I am lifting weights. I am squatting and shit. I, I, everything they I'm eating orange pills. Everything that these. Man. You said you was eating. They what they what they what they say about orange pills? I'm around Jamaican niggas, man, um, and they eat. They talking about orange pills and the, the vitamin lecithin. This and I think that's it. Lecithin. That's in orange pills. They was talking about that in the '90s and shit. Like the Dr. Sabi shit is popping now. You know them island niggas been on that shit. Hell yeah. <laughs> so. I'm doing time with these guys, and like I said, I'm like one of the younger guys on this block, so maybe they felt that each one of these older guys felt that it was their duty to give me some information and shit like that. Like, I could go and, you know, just accept, you know, good information from these older older veterans and shit. Like, they, they weren't trying to, they weren't predatory, and again, it wasn't no, nobody was trying to do nothing to me. It's... You hear how long you hear, young buck? Read it, nah, ah, man, that ain't nothing, man. You you out the door and shit, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, um, they, they, they my, my my progression and my confidence it did have a lot to do with these older convicts. Now, boom, um, I started to win, you know, the approval of my peers and everybody. My name is spreading. Me and this guy named Zafir. His name is Leon Woodard. He ended up being the notorious drug kingpin in Philly. He, uh, I was on a team with him, and me and him ended up meshing. Me and him ended up being like peanut butter and jelly. He had been up there for years getting his ass whooped. You know what I'm saying? Because he had no help. He had been up there getting his ass whooped for years, man. And what when you I mean? Came you, mean there, you mean on the court? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a varsity sport. They play in other jails. They play in Dallas. They playing SCI Dallas. That's the jail that Wallow was at. You see, Wallow was at them games. SCI Dallas, Greaterford. These are notorious prisons and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, we play Mahanoy, Cold Township. These are all state prisons and shit. So um, he had been my Zafir. He was the only gun up retreat at the time. He had a little help, but he was the only gun. He was up there. He doing time if he. Been in jail nine years. He's been getting his ass whooped nine years, uh, last. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it might be some other other guys on the team that got was getting their ass whooped for 15 years and shit. Like again, these these niggas is doing time. So he had been getting served for years. When I got up there, he got some instant offense. Now I know how to boogie. Now it's some politics involved. Starting point guard. Is, is, is doing um, he's doing life he's doing life I play point guard right um, the coach came to me and said man you already know you like you like the baddest motherfucker here nobody here is better than you man but I'd appreciate you know if you accepted the six man so um, I don't have to disrupt the chemistry of the team and shit. And I understood what he was saying and shit. He's saying that this guy that's been running this team, he got life. You better than him. I can sit him down. But it's going to just fuck up the whole everything here. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I played six men in, 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 um, in state prison and shit. Not because nobody was better than me because of prison politics. And mm -hmm. I accepted them. Um, me and this guy Zafir, Leon Woodard, we won every competition, two on two, three on three. We just tore through the 
the jail that we were in. So by the time Varsity came, we just was just killing shit, man. We was killing shit, lads. I'm not fucking around, man. The niggas from Philadelphia, when they hear this and they recollect this, they gonna be like, yeah, I remember those years and shit because the jail that we was at retreat was the punching bag of the Northeast Regional region for years, for years. That jail that Wallow was at, Dallas, they had that shit locked up for like 10 years. When when we went up there to play them, they had championship banners hanging from the rafters like the Boston Celtics. They got championships everywhere. And um, I'm a part of a traveling team now. When we go up there to play them, Zafir, my man, he can't come. You know why? Because his co-defendant is in, is in this jail. And they got some type of separation going on and shit. Um, so he can't travel to this game. So this this whole issue with this notorious jail, Dallas, this fall on my shoulders and shit. I'm only 19. You know what I mean? Um, I performed, man. I got busy, man. I had like 27 on them niggas. We lost. I, I, I missed two crucial free throws down the stretch. We lost. But this same team, Dallas, when they came to our spot retreat, we beat them by 39 points. Hmm. We pressed them. Yeah, we pressed them niggas and we beat them by 39. When Zafir was there, when, you know what I'm saying, when our full our full power was there, we beat them by 39. Throughout all of this, nobody on our team is dunking. Um, it's an older guy named Ford. He's a dunker, but he's an older dude, so he don't too much do the shit no more. Uh, me, I, whenever I get a chance, I'm punching shit. So uh, my name is starting to build and, and, and move to this I'm get, it's like a scout report when I would get to other jails when we would go to another jail to play somebody we go to their town hall for the day last mm. we walk and we go to another jail imagine being at Kasaki and going to Attica and going in their mess hall to eat so what they did just like woke y'all up early in the morning put y'all on the bus early in the morning everybody gets shackled they got bag lunches, we got on jumpsuits, and we got our, our uniforms and duffel bags and shit. When we get to the next jail, we go through security clearance, they take them fucking shackles, the handcuffs off us, and it's showtime. It's like we regular inmates and shit. We got state ID on us, and we walking through the jail, through this next jail with our prison uniforms on. We walking through their jail looking like the San Antonio Spurs and shit. <laughs> and, and yeah, we yeah, we like 9D walking through their jail and niggas is pointing because niggas got homeboys and shit. They like, oh shit, retreat here. Yo, look at Zion. You know, look at Butter. Like niggas got co-defendants and guys that they grew up with in these jails and shit. And this shit is electric, man. It's like the Beatles coming through and shit. And I'm a part of this shit, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a part of this shit. I'm in another prison. I'm sitting at, and, and they mess all niggas pointing at us and smiling and talking they shit. And, you know, game time and, and an hour, niggas. You know, we gonna see what's up. And it's lovely, man. There's that shit no is like, fucking, that, shit is no like that shit is like being a, it felt, for jail, that shit probably felt like being in an NBA. Like, that, that was that was definitely our Division One college NBA experience, man. Anybody that was there, we got preferential treatment. We was like stars, like I, we was like stars, bro. We was like stars, man. We was like stars, man. The fact that we was able to travel and go, show up in somebody else's prison and shit, man. They just, it's crazy and shit. And, and the ball game is at one o'clock. The guys who. Niggas who ain't got write-ups and shit like that, they can come to the game. So you playing in front? Y'all didn't have varsity games in, in, in New York City prisons. We had games, but I don't, I don't, I don't think they travel to other jails. I could be wrong because I never played on none of them. But I came yeah. to a lot of tournaments. My bro foul that 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 I be messing with. He took a tournament in Green. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to talk about that. But um, you know, it yeah, be it be. Yeah. It be dorm against dorm, like you feel me? It be all side against side, like the old side of the jail versus the new side of the jail. It don't really, I don't think dudes be really traveling. I could be wrong. All right, after after we went through the battle in other units, housing units, and other other side the other side of the jail, the creme de la creme, the cream of the crop in the prison is gonna come to the top. And them is the guys that's going to be on the traveling team and shit on the varsity team. 
But anyway, we had a, a schedule. We played everybody twice. One, we played them at home, played away. And um, I remember, I remember learning that we played during Ramadan. I remember uh, fasting, and I remember that we were allowed to eat on our road trips. I guess you can you can break your fast when you're traveling or something like that. And I was that was crucial, man, during them games. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we playing in Ramadan and shit like that. But um, the, the the whole thing, man, like when it, it was a whole, it was a big pride thing, man. When other jails came to our jail, we come out in our warm ups. They playing money, power, respect in the gym. We run around the gym doing our warm ups, do our layup lines and shit. Niggas is going crazy, and then it's game time, and this is NBA. Division one caliber hoops. Everybody that's on these teams that's playing could have played Division one, no doubt. And a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of guys could have played in the NBA. And everybody knows that niggas don't refute that shit. Niggas know what I'm talking about. That um, whole line about Michael Jordan, a nigga up north who didn't get that break. Last, it would be guys in jail, right? You'll be doing time with a guy, and he might be a clerk in the library. He don't even play. You've been doing time for him, with him for years. He don't even play. You've never seen this guy play. You know him as a library clerk. One day, he decides to come out and play basketball. This nigga, does, this nigga scored 35 points. <laughs> this, nigga dunk, this nigga dunk a basketball. Like, this is the type of freak shit that was going on in jail and shit. You I told you, bro, like I told you before, I kid you not. I was in a jail name called Oneida with a dude that they called Baby Jordan. And he had the bald head like Jordan and all of that. And I promise you, like I said, state prison probably not regular, um, probably don't got the same uh, uh, dimensions. And, and now it's not regulation like NBA shit. But right. this motherfucker was dunking from the foul line, my nigga. I'm talking about this nigga. The whole jail was talking about this nigga. As soon as I walked in the jail, they was like, yo, there's a kid here named Baby Jordan. He's supposed That's to me. be in the NBA. That's me, <laughs> that was, That's me, that was you in PA? In, in PA That's me, Laz. That's me, Laz. When I end, now, now, I made my name up retreat. I'm banging up retreat. Boom, I go home. I get, you know, I get parole. I go home. I'm still reckless. I get violated on parole. I get sent to this jail called Albion which is in Western Pennsylvania. When I get there, my first day in the chair, I'm walking through. I don't know nobody there but my homeboys and shit. And I, all I know is that they, they know that I'm there. When I get there, man, I walk in the chair hall, so many niggas pointing at me and shit like that. Like, yo, yo, that's him right there and shit. It was dudes who had seen me play at Camp Hill who had seen me play at retreat who had got transferred and shit like that and they was telling my homeboys from Erie yo it's this big lip nigga it's this big lip nigga from Erie he a young boy man this nigga's a killer on the court I'm telling you and they don't know that he's talking about me because they know me as a drug boy in the street you know a street nigga and shit like that you see what I'm saying so they don't have no idea that they talking about Jamil you know what I mean? And when I got there, they had been telling my homeboys about me. And when I walked in, they like, oh, that's Jamil. And shit, they like, man, that's that's him right there and shit. So I'm in another jail and with, where I actually ran into my, my nemesis from, from Camp Hill. His name was Mario Mitchell. This is a famous nigga from North Philly, gangster. Uh, take money, boy, bust his gun. Strong, every all of that gorilla shit, man, that you see in Don Diva. Only thing he was young, just like me and shit. Now, when I'm at the jail camp here, when me and him going at it on the court, we talking shit to each other. I don't know how notorious this boy is, cause I know I don't know him, last. You know what I mean? All I know is that I'm on the court. You just fouled me, nigga. Check ball, like you know what I'm saying? So he is at this jail telling my my homeboys from here, yo, it's this dude, man, this nigga think he tough, big lip nigga, man, he can hoop and shit. You know what I'm saying? He from here, do y'all know him? 
So, but they don't know who, who he was talking about. When I got there, they like, that's him. So my nemesis from Camp Hill is there and he had already been telling my boys about me. He never gave me props to my face. He gave me props when I was gone and shit. He had been telling my people at home, homie was nice. So anyway, when I got there, he sent me, he like, yo, what size you wear? This is the celebrity afforded to you in prison and shit when you play ball. Um, I don't even get a chance to go to East Bay, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I ended up, I ended up, you know, spending my own money doing my transaction within the next couple of weeks. But the day I get there, I'm out of them state boots. I'm in basketball sneakers. Somebody that brought me a pair of fucking basketball sneakers. The niggas that who just got to the jail with me, they're like, how the fuck did these shoes already? You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Niggas that get, niggas that brought me basket, brought me some sneaks to hoop in and shit. You dig what I'm saying? Why well, niggas, because niggas wanted you to play on their team or just niggas that you knew? It's wreck. It's new wreck in the jail and shit. Like, my, the, the nigga that, that brought me the sneaks, he, he, I, I, me and him not going to be on the same team. He brought me some sneaks, man, so we can get it in. <laughs> That's real <laughs> shit, though. That's you know what I'm real. saying? Like, yeah, he brought me the sneaks so we can get in, man. Go ahead, man. I got, you got some shoes, man. Go get your five, nigga. You know what it is and shit. Like, we not buddies. He from... We, we became buddies on the hoop court and shit. Like, he from North Philly. I'm from Erie. He got a difference of opinion. He feel he liver. They the Brooklyn niggas of, of Pennsylvania. You understand what I'm saying? They the Brownsville niggas of Pennsylvania. These North Philly dick niggas. You feel me? So, mm-hmm. you know, he, we, we not gonna play against him. Nah, nigga. He, he think he better than me. Check ball. I feel I'm better than him. And, and we're the entertainment in this jail, last. You know what I'm saying? We was in the, we was the entertainment in this jail when I got there. This nigga Mario Mitchell, he had already had him a squad. Him and this old, older guy named Lenny. Lenny was the best in the jail. He was an older dude, man. He played for LaSalle. Let me get something. I want to clarify something um, for people too that's listening. Young niggas don't run prisons and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you hear, I be listening to you know different stories and shit. You know, like, I hear, you know, the blood stories and shit like that, how blood niggas be acting crazy and shit like that. In them same jails, it's some older veteran convict niggas that they don't want no problems with. Am I right, last? That's a fact. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, young niggas don't run jails. They just be running wild and running their mouth, but they don't run them and shit. It be the older OG niggas that got them years in. Yeah, really K.O. Smitty and those types of guys. Like, those guys are in... The older J, the older black mafia guys from Philadelphia, they would be in the jail. They was in the jails that I was in. That I was in and shit. You dig what I'm saying? Um, but getting back to that, uh, I'm a young nigga, and I'm, I'm building my, my name and reputation in these grown men jails. When I get to these jails, I'm... There's right there, lads. There's niggas that feel just like me. Already there. You feel me? There's niggas that feel just like me that already there. And some of them have been there a long time. Some of them, it, it, it'll be an older guy on the sideline. They just watch the games and sit on the sideline and crack jokes. And you don't even know that this dude has scored 50 points, man. He'll come out there one day and drop. you like, that's why this old motherfucker is talking so much shit. You dig what I'm saying? Because he's nice. And this is for real. This is for real. And I didn't have any... I did a three to nine. I didn't have no fights in jail, lads. You dig what I'm saying? I didn't have no... I was favored in jail. Puerto Rican niggas like me. Everybody like a slam dunk, my nigga. You feel me? <laughs> Even the police. Even the... You know what I'm saying? Like... Everybody like that shit, man. When I was funk in the yard, man, I catch an oop or some shit, man. My fuckers go crazy, man. My fuckers buying me sodas and I come off the court. Niggas got sodas for me and shit, like yeah. ice cream. Let me tell you some real shit though. I always, <laughs> I always envied dudes that could ball their ass off in the pen because they was able to warp zone their way out of the penitentiary. Like, when you on that court, my nigga, like, I know dudes that were straight gangsters. And, and they did their whole entire bid straight hooping. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Like, they just balled their whole bid to make that time go by. And these is dudes that was notorious in the streets. 
You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But they, when they in the pen, that's how they pass that time. That's how they able to even cope with that time. Cause that without- basketball court attract notorious niggas, man. Like the guys that you, that I would be playing against are the guys. It's rarely. It was rare that the guy, the guys that's out there playing didn't have a reputation. This nigga known for getting money. This nigga known in his neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? This is a popular nigga. The, the guys on these basketball courts, they popular and they're stars and shit. Straight mm. like that. Straight hood stars. Straight like that, man. The, the police would be out there watching us, man. Like, Mario Mitchell was on the other side of the prison. So... He was on the west side of the prison. I was on the east side. He then got me sneakers from the other side of the jail. And they we got the basketball players got so much juice. The activities department, man, they'll call you over there, man. From they'll send you a pass to your block. Yo, we need inmate Lindsay to come to the activity department. Tell them to bring some sneaks. You see what I'm saying? Like you would just that would that would, those are privileges, man. Like mm. during times when niggas was locked down, let's say there's some problems in the jail. The jail was locked down. The activities department people, they still have to come to work. They doing whole whole eight hour shifts. They over there doing nothing, man. Them niggas called to the security office. Yo, send Jamil Lindsay over here, Mario Mitchell, Blase Blase, Dwight Beast, and start naming niggas. And next thing you know, we in the gym playing full court with the activities staff and the rest of the jail is locked the fuck down, my nigga. Straight up, straight up. Um, I never had, I just was so popular but behind it, man. Like, if I had an issue with somebody or an issue was bubbling, it would get, uh, you know, squashed before it even reached me. Like, yo, Jamil, man, Jamil ain't with them. That nigga's a ball player, man. Them niggas, you can bug it, man. Ain't cool, nigga. You can holler at him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, I, it was never, nobody was scared of me. You know what I'm saying? But on that basketball court, on that basketball court, I'm amongst the. I, I was. I had a drug case there. On a basketball court, I'm a killer. <laughs> Feel me? Word up. When I got on on YouTube and I started my channel, one of the first videos I did, I announced myself as a prison basketball legend. I thought about it. For that, my that's where all of my highlights are at. And I had the support. And I got the pictures. I got trophies. Uh, from the west, from the northeast regional championship, I got pictures, um, and not only that, a lot of people that follow Gully TV who was in jail with me, they was like, they they be in my comments like, what? that nigga was nice, that nigga had no business in prison and shit. It just some of us made wrong decisions, and it wasn't just me. It was a whole bunch of niggas that was NBA caliber that I was competing against in state prison, man. The luxury of being able to dunk on people made me stand out. And I was able to express myself. I was able to rid my body of frustration and shit. If I was going through it, if a chick had left me during my bid and shit like that, I'm playing ball every day, man. I'm funking that basketball, man. Like, it's like punching somebody in the face and shit. And I'm playing against niggas that got life. This nigga ain't never going home. Shit, this nigga rowdy is a motherfucker, man. But he's a ball player, man. And on the court, I can punch him in his face with this basketball. All I got to do is just take off and punch this shit. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And that's what it is. <laughs> this is the entertainment, uh, Laz. Niggas going crazy. Dudes need Stab. that in the pen, man. Dudes, dudes, dudes long and yearn for that in the pen. Just that excitement and that something that something that just breaks the monotony, monotony of jail. You feel what I'm saying? Like... I played in big games. I played in summer leagues. Summer leagues were every 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 prison block on the side of the jail. You all got their team. Everybody put up five logs and shit. I didn't play for you know five hundred packs of cigarettes and shit. I know I know the mathematic currency breakdown of cigarettes in the nineties and shit like that. You know what I mean? Cigarettes was like money. You know what I mean? Niggas just smoke, man. I don't smoke, man. I got cigarettes just to play on niggas' intramural teams and shit like that. Like, I could take cigarettes and give them to a nigga to smoke, man. And here, man, how you bitch put $50 on my books and shit? Or, you know, here, you go to the commissary for me. You know how that shit translate, guys. You know how that, that math break down. 
saying? So I was gonna ask you about that because it'd be heavy money on the basketball games in the penitentiary. We was we was betting on ourselves a lot of times in the in the summer leagues. Everybody, every team would be to put up some money, and whoever win win it, y'all break that down and shit. Uh, we put we pay refs. The refs are tough guys, known tough guys who respect it. I ended up being a ref before I went home and shit because of my knowledge of the game and and, and, and me being respected in the jail. You got to be a somebody to tell a, a, a nigga that's doing. 20 to 40, he traveled, man, and his money on the line. Nigga, you travel, man. Check ball, bro. What the fuck is you doing? You know, you holding the game up. Give me the ball. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be able to do that. You got to be able to uh, deal with men. And this was, I, I, I etched out my territory and my identity, my masculinity, all of that shit was on display on the basketball court. From playing basketball, niggas, came to me like, yo, you, you, you playing flag, flag, flag football, fam? I don't even know about flag football. I think that's a kid's sport. I don't know that this shit is like the NFL in jail. This shit is, this shit is serious. This shit is serious. This shit is serious. Everybody plays it. Niggas just benching 400 pounds. They out there playing. This is where they get their thing off. Yo, Mill, you want to play, you want to play, play, uh, you want to play, uh, football? Yeah, I play football. I'm out there playing quarterback and wide receiver, and I'm a, I'm a star. I'm a star, my nigga. I ain't no gangster, man. I'm a ball player, man. Everybody get their dribble right. Laz, I appreciate you, my nigga. I appreciate you too, my bro. Good looking out, you heard? Part two, man. I'll see you soon. Facts. Bye.